The other day, somebody was asking me about how to do particle board furniture and laminate tops. So this is going to be a rundown of what you're dealing with and the steps and products to use to make your piece look high end and gorgeous for years to come. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Crystal and this is The Refurbished Life. You may have heard MDF and particle board interchanged, but they're not the same thing. MDF is medium density fiber board and it's made of wood fibers that are very tightly pressed. And then particle board is made of wood chips that are pressed, so MDF is much denser and heavier. These materials will always be covered with something to disguise them, and that would usually be veneer, which is a very thin layer of wood, or laminate, which is just printed with a wood-like texture and is very slick. So how can you tell what you're working with? Well, you just go behind the piece that you're working on and look at the back edge. It will show you whether it's solid wood, MDF, particle board, laminate top, or a veneer top. There may be some little areas you find that need a little wood filler. And if you happen to be working with a wood veneer on the top, be careful when sanding there because you may expose some of the particle board if you go too deep. So my recommendation is to strip that first and then do a light sanding afterwards and you'll be good to go. Here's an example of an old project I did where there was a lot of water damage so I had to sand it down. So then you just put wood filler in and then you sand it smooth and you're on to primer. Okay, don't get mad at me. I know primer's coming next, but I could not pass up this flat front. I love to snatch dressers up that are flat like this because you can do decoupage or transfers. You can do different kind of molding. Um, and in this case, I wanted to do trim. I think this is really going to upscale the piece and really make it look luxurious. And you would never guess that it's particle board. But if you're anxious to see what primer I use, you can skip ahead just a little bit and I'll see you in a second. This is called a miter shear. And all you do is put to the angle that you want and get your mark up on that middle spot right there and then cut through. These were really slippery when I was placing them down with the glue, so I taped them in place and let them dry overnight so they wouldn't be sliding around when I used the nail gun. I brought these outside because I am short on time and um, I'm needing to spray because of that. I only have about two hours left at daytime. And so this is the primer that I always, always use. It has an amazing adhesion, um, like almost annoying because if you get it on anything else, it's really hard to get off. Uh, it's a very thin product and um, shellac base. It will block uh, any wood tannins or anything you have if you're doing real wood but it will stick like crazy on laminate. So that's what I'm gonna opt for every time. Usually I do a gallon full. I buy that one, but it's really expensive, but it will last like forever. Um, but because I'm short on time, I only have a couple hours of daylight left. 
I'm gonna do the can version. This is about $20. Um, but also because we have this trim work here, uh, if you're doing it by hand with the brush, um, because it's thin, you'll have to keep an eye on drips and things like that. Just go back, you know, a few a few minutes later, go out, um, check everything once you're done, if you're doing it by hand, make sure there's no drips. You're gonna want two layers and then it, it dries super, super fast. Then you do a light sanding on it. Um, and then you're ready for your paint. But I'm gonna go with this. And instead of taping everything off, I'm just gonna hold this like that. to make it more simple and quick. While I'm letting the drawers dry outside, I came inside to do the body with my big gallon of shellac primer. It separates like that after just a few weeks, so you have to do this every time. It makes it really, really good. It's quite thin and it dries very, very fast. A little goes a long way. I get out my little tray and I always line it with foil and this is optional to use a little strainer if you want to. Sometimes little dried bits can get in there, but You'll be sanding it afterwards anyway, so it's just your choice. Along with the roller, I use an inexpensive paintbrush to apply it in the edges because it's really hard to get out of the bristles, so I typically just throw the paintbrush away. Okay, so we start in the corners. In the edges, anywhere your roller can't get, you do that with your paintbrush. Sorry about the shadows, I'm fighting with the daylight right now. I'm a little bit nervous about the winter hours coming. It's already daylight savings time, which was just the other day, so um, it's dark about five now. And I work uh, in education during most of the week, and so I'm not home until later in the day. So and I'm home with my kids, make dinner and all that stuff. Um, a lot of you watching, I bet, can relate to that. Probably brainstorming, what kind of projects can I do without needing to sand outside or spray paint outside? Um, so, something I would suggest is if you know it's a project that can be done inside with like little repairs, little sanding, things like that, stock up those projects um, in a shed or a basement or wherever you can um, for when you know you're going to need to pull them out during those short um, short hours during the day, short light hours. And just going over lightly. You don't want to try to pack it on there. It's just not going to really work anyway because it is so thin. So just get kind of even on there and um, overlap your sections a little bit because um, you can start getting little ridge lines because it does dry so fast. I'm doing round number two and that will be it. So we all need really light pressure, almost no pressure at all. Just to make sure that those little peaks, as you might be able to see that little teeny line, go down. Thank you everyone who voted on this color over on my Facebook platform. The color is Hidden Falls by Benjamin Moore. Really beautiful color. And this paint has great leveling and durability. 
This color is really beautiful. What I'm going to use for the edges and the detail on the drawers is this zebra wedge brush. It's really great for lots of detail work. It covers the area much more thoroughly and quicker. So I love this one. Obviously you can tell it's been used a lot. It's just covered, completely covered with paint. I use a high density foam roller for minimal texture and I apply this the same as I would any paint and that is to make sure the area is thoroughly covered with not too much paint and then with light light pressure go over each section overlapping the next so that it minimizes that line in the middle of each row. This is a really gorgeous finish, I love it. And this paint doesn't technically need a top coat, but if you're using one, this is a top coat I really love. And this is the sponge that I always use, and I just get some water in it, wring it out, and then go to work on it. I make sure this section is saturated, and then I always finish up by going in a nice clean line back and forth, just like I do with my foam roller. And if you want to do oil base, just be aware that oil base tends to yellow over time. So just be aware if you're using light colors that that is a possibility. If you're using black, then that probably won't be a worry. However, if you're using a water-based clear coat over a black paint or a very, very dark paint, it's best to add just a little bit of that dark paint into the water-based top coat to avoid any fogginess or streaks. This is right after two coats have dried. A quick reminder of where we started, and here it is now. You could not even recognize it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. We're close to that first 1,000 subscribers. I'm so excited. Thank you guys. We'll see you next time.